It is a big excavator time. This is Diecast Masters model 85709, which is the Cat 395 general purpose version. We go straight to the weigh bridge to find that it weighs in at 6 pounds 6 ounces, which is nearly 2.9 kilograms. As usual for Diecast Masters, we have the outer shipping carton. And let's end tip the contents. Here we have a nylon bag and it's the wrapping for a metal tin. And as you can see, it's a big metal tin. On top, there's a nice photo of the real machine and it seems to be at work on a demolition site. And that's probably appropriate as we'll see later. There's a photo of the model on the side of the tin and with a quick bit of wrist action, we spin the tin and there's the details of the real machine and its operating weight is around 94 tons. Now it's time to lift the lid on this model, so let's lift the lid. And the first thing we see is a small instruction sheet and we'll look at that again shortly. And there's a couple of small pieces, including a set of tweezers and a bag containing a few parts. After that, we can lift out the big piece of foam rubber and this one comes out oh so easily. With that, we get to see the model inside and the tin is big because of the way the model is packed and there's a couple of accessories with it. There's an elastic band to remove, which is there just for shipping. And now we can have a look at the instruction sheet. And firstly, it covers how to put the operator in the cab. And then it explains how to change the work tools. For the assembly, we'll put the operator in the cab. And the first thing to do is to open the cab door. Now you get these tweezers to help put the operator in the cab, but he really doesn't like those. It's much better to manhandle the geezer into the cab and then give him a good prodding so he squeals. Let's put the model onto the cranes etc weigh bridge and it comes in at about two pounds six ounces or is a bit over one kilogram. We start the detail underneath and the crawler tracks have got bolt head details and they are made of metal but the main base plate is a plastic part. And usually there's detail on the underside of the body, including bolt head details and small graphics. Here's a closer look at the crawler tracks and track frames. And there are no working rollers, but otherwise the detail is very good. The cab has got full protection with plastic grills. And there are mirrors attached to the metal grab rail. The interior detailing is very good and you can see there's an operator inside. And you can also see that the floor inside is textured. On the outside is a solid walkway, but it has texturing. Moving down the side, the panels have door handles and the hinges are not too large. But the opening doors on this review model at least don't quite line up perfectly. Towards the back, there's a metal grab rail and the grills are of graphics. At the back, the big counterweight has lifting eyes, but they don't have holes. But the decoration does look very smart. On the other side of the machine, there are a couple more opening panels and these ones line up quite well. They have extensive graphics to portray the grills and there are more metal grab rails. Other small graphics add to the detailed look with the cat logo represented well. At the front, there's a plastic mirror attached to the metal handrails and there's some more textured surfaces. The hydraulics to the main boom rams have extensive soft hoses. Looking down to the inside and there's plenty of pleasing details and that includes the textured walkway. The small grab rails are all in metal. Up on top there are highlighted bolt head details and the hydraulic hoses have silvered connectors. Cast in pipework runs up the top of the boom and then the hydraulic hoses take over. There are small work lights and the wiring for those is highlighted in black. The hydraulic ram jackets are modelled in stiff plastic and soft hoses cross over from the boom to the stick. Pipework runs to the end of the stick. The bucket is an all metal part with wear plates and nice looking teeth. The connections are painted except for the black screws which hold the bucket onto the stick. This general purpose version of the machine has two tools included. One is a hydraulic hammer, although the end of it is a little bit blunt. The other tool is a large hydraulic shear. It has a plastic quick connector at the top 
and small graphics add to the detail. Let's do a quick comparison of this general purpose version with the mass excavation version. And first up, you can see that the mass excavation version has a shorter and heavier boom and stick. And those parts are built more heavily to cope with the heavier bucket load. The bucket connections on both are the same, so any tools are interchangeable. There are some other smaller, perhaps unexpected differences. And you can see that the ME version has fewer hydraulic connectors to the boom. Whereas the GP version has more, and that's so that it can power any hydraulic tools that are fitted. Lastly, there's the obvious difference in bucket size. Out on the test track and the crawler tracks roll very easily. They just need a surface to bite on. And as you can see, the crawler tracks are spring loaded and the model also whizzes round smoothly. In terms of the movement of the boom, it doesn't go up as high as the real machine. In fact, on the real machine, the hydraulic rams can lean back a little. Here we have the stick and bucket rams fully closed up and the stiffness of the hydraulics is good enough to hold the boom and stick out at maximum reach. This arrangement is longer than the ME version, but it's still stable over the tracks. Moving now to close things up as small as possible, and at this point there's just a slight looseness in the stick ram. Next we move on to the patented cranes etc digging at depth test. The boom rams get quite stiff as you fully close them up, but they do close up and this test is definitely a pass. The model has a full range of opening panels and on this review sample the hinges are very good because they allow the doors to open to a very good angle. And there you can see some detail inside. There's an opening hatch on top and that lets you look down onto some engine detail and you can see it's made up of a number of different components. Next we move to the other side of the model to see the last of the opening panel doors. Again we use the included plastic pointer to help us get the doors open and what you see are the silvered radiator panels. This general purpose version of the model comes with work tools and to fit them we need to remove the bucket and to do that you need a screwdriver to undo four screws. And you can see just how quickly the Cranes Etc team works. With the screws undone you can then prise the bucket free and that will give us the chance to fit the hydraulic hammer. So let's offer the hydraulic hammer up to the end of the stick. And it fits easily, you just have to replace the four screws. Once it's attached, you can pose it as if it's at work. And actually the hammer itself is spring loaded. So you can pretend hammering the end of your finger. The hydraulic shears have more functionality, they fully rotate. And the jaws are also fully functional. They are a little bit stiff to operate, but they do fully open and close. Just make sure you don't cut the end of your finger off when closing them. The shears are fixed to a quick coupler, so you don't have to undo the four screws to remove it. This is a really nice model of the Caterpillar 395 general purpose version by Diecast Masters. The extra work tools means it's particularly good for use in a demolition diorama. And the model itself has a very good level of both detailing and also functionality. It is on the pricey side, but overall this model is good enough to be rated as excellent.